Survivor Live proudly presents the Oklahoma State 5A High School Basketball Championship Game from the Maybe Center in Tulsa with Dean Blevins and Mick Cornett. Brought to you by Liberty Bank with 13 Oklahoma City locations. Arby's Roast Beef Restaurant. Different is good. Mathis Brothers Furniture. America's Furniture Store, 3434 West Reno. And by Homeland. A good deal better. Welcome to the Maybe Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma for the 5A High School Boys State Championships. Hello again, everybody. I'm Dean Blevins along with Mick Cornett. And Mick, we have another superb matchup this afternoon. We had the number one 4A team taking on the number two 4A team. And Ardmore was victorious and tonight another dynamic matchup. That was a big upset. Of course, with either one of these teams tonight, it won't be an upset. Yeah. But really, you have to think Bartlesville, with their experience at this tournament, has to have a slight edge. But I don't think Edmund would give up anything. You know, one word that exists only in the world of sports is three-peat. And, Dean, it applies tonight. Oh, it does. Bartlesville has won two straight. They have uh, won four of five. In fact, look at the numbers here. 1989, Bartlesville won the state championship in 1990. Tony Robinson's Norman Tigers were victorious. 1991, Bartlesville back. 92, it is Bartlesville once again. So they have totally dominated, but this is an outstanding Edmund team that comes in. There are some marquee players in this ball game. Clifford Crenshaw for Edmund was one of our top five players in the state of Oklahoma at five alive. And on the other side, you have a set of twins and Bartlesville is 76 and 7 with this tandem play. Wow, Gerard Harris and Jerome Harris. You'll hear people talk about high school basketball. They'll talk about those Bartlesville twins or the Harris twins. That's who they're referring to. Division one, probably, but they are go-to guys, and they're the main reason Bartlesville is a very, very good team. Now let's take a look at the top five in the in Class 5A. And we see that Bartlesville, number one, Edmund two, Dean. And Tulsa, Washington, third. Tulsa Memorial, four. And Putnam City, number five. It's been a long season in high school basketball this year. The question is, how did these two teams get here? And we start with Bartlesville, Mick. And uh, it's no surprise they're here, but they still had to earn their way here. Well, eight teams get to the state tournament. And from there, it's a single elimination tournament. There you see Northwest Classen. That's who Bartlesville beat in the first round. And then yesterday, actually last night, they beat Tulsa Memorial. As for Edmond, they beat Tulsa Washington handily, 72-57. Booker T, an outstanding club, and they beat Lawton Eisenhower rather handily as well, 74-55. We think we have an outstanding uh, game tonight. Not only great players, but great styles, very entertaining. We'll see teams that uh, play the same type of ball. They'll play up and down on the court. They will also play pressure defense, something we see in college ball is very popular, and we will see again tonight. And Edmund has changed his style a little bit. You know, they used to be a, little, a very deliberate ball club, would pass the ball a lot. In fact, they yeah. had a four-pass four rule for several years. That rule's gone. They want to put it up, especially when it gets in the hands of Crenshaw. Stay with us. Number two, Edmund taking on number one, Bartlesville. We'll be back in a moment here at the Maybe Center. Most places that sell subs are generous with the lettuce and stuff, but... Welcome back to Tulsa. Edmund getting ready to take on Bartlesville in the Class 5A state championship. Lots of fans here tonight, Mick. Probably, what, five, 6,000 people, you think? And Bartlesville definitely brought its share, maybe more. All right, time for the national anthem. And it was beautiful this afternoon from Melissa Santa Cruz. Melissa, come in. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Class 5A Boys State Championship game between the Bartlesville Bruins and the Edmund Bulldogs. Before we introduce the starting lineups and all of the players involved in tonight's game, please pause for our national anthem, sung by Dell City High School senior Melissa Santa Cruz. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the pair 
brawl us fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket track glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the For this evening's Class A Boys Championship, we will be introducing both teams' non-starters, and then the starting lineup will be introduced alternately. First, let's meet the Edmund Bulldogs. With a record of 26 wins and two losses, their head coach is Mike De La Garza. Their assistant coaches, Guy Hardiker and Chip Barnes. Here are the non-starters for the Bulldogs tonight. Number five, Darren Hacker. Number 10, Jerry Glover. Number 11, Jason Soros. Number 15, Matt McReynolds. Number 20, Rusty Wiles. Number 22, Mike Jones. Number 35, Brad Reynolds. Number 42, Marcus Nash. Number 44, Eric Brown. Number 45, Mike McKissick. The Edmund team defeated Booker T. Washington and Lawton Eisenhower to get to the finals. Now let's meet the Bartlesville Bruins. Their record is 25 wins and two losses. The head coach is Wes Brown. The assistant coaches are Ray Schaefer and Rick Johnson. Here are the Bruins' non-starters for tonight's game. Number 10, DeMarco Daly. Number 25, Jared Scroggins. Number 32, Kevin Wassmiller. Number 34, Donald Nash. Number 23, Mark Evans. Number 42, Quincy Rogers. Number 44, Lester Wyatt. Number 45, Rodney Height. Number 43, Marty Agnew. And number 12, Charles Height. The Bruins have reached the finals by defeating Northwest Classen and Memorial. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here are your starting lineups for tonight's Class A Boys Championship game. For Edmund, at guard, a six foot one junior, number four, JoJo Daniels. For Bartlesville, at guard, a five foot 11 senior, number 21, Tim Wassmiller. For Edmund, at guard, a six foot one junior, number 21, Craig Frazier. For Bartlesville at guard, a five foot 11 senior, number 30, Billy LaFleur. For Edmund at forward, a six foot four senior, number 23, Clifford Crenshaw. At forward for Bartlesville, a six foot four senior, number 11, Gerard Harris. For Edmund, at forward, a six foot five senior, number 34, Ryan Morgan. 
for Bartlesville at forward, a six foot five senior, number 24, Jerome Harris. For Edmund at center, a six foot seven junior, number 50, J.R. Cunningham. And for Bartlesville at forward, a six foot five senior, number 33, John Knoll. Well, we think we have a great one coming your way. Do not even think about leaving. Stay with us back in a couple of minutes. The officials for tonight's class five of the boys championship are Haywood Hill and Stan. The 5A championship. Will Bartlesville make it three straight or will Edmund win the 5A title? Nick, Jerome Harris and Ryan Morgan jumping and Edmund takes the early break. Gerard Harris clears the boards for Bartlesville. Both teams man to man, a lot of pressure defensively. Jerome. Gerard. Jerome got it low, missed it, but Gerard was able to put it back. That's the Twin Towers team that the Houston Rockets always wanted. Mm -hmm. Cunningham missed. Here comes Bartlesville. LaFleur. Gerard Harris. Bartlesville has gotten two point blank opportunities. Edmund cannot allow that tonight. Another turnover. Crenshaw threw it away. Jerome. Edmund likes the pace. They don't like the score. Bruin six. Edmund nothing. One minute gone. Stay with us. We'll be back. It's the Harris twin six. Edmund nothing. What a start. Wow. Jerome and Gerard Harris setting the pace. It's important for Edmund. They have a lot of emotion here. You've got to contain it. Take advantage of that emotion, but don't let it take advantage of you. Crenshaw forcing it into the middle and draws the foul. You always hear about slowing that motor down, and I think it's a perfect example here with Edmund. They have come out very fired up, and if you don't watch out, you have everything in fast motion. You just can't slow everything down the way it should be, and I'm sure that's what Mike De La Garza did during that quick timeout. Cunningham. De La Garza told me to win tonight. He's got to have a big game from that guy, number 50, J.R. Cunningham. That's Tim Wassmiller driving the baseline. Gerard Harris, air ball. Cunningham rips it down. Six to two, Bartlesville. Morgan. And he draws the foul. I think Jerome Harris picked it up, Dean. Well, that's one of those you say, no, 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 stay under control. Beautiful shot. Go to the line and a chance for three. I think Morgan, although he looked a little bit out of control, realized he was going to get the whistle and threw it up, and he got the bucket and a chance for three, although he misses. Two-point game. Jerome tripped up. No call. Here comes Edmund. Two on two. Crenshaw. Oh, what a finisher. Beautiful move to the basket as Crenshaw, with a great burst of speed, takes it strong to the hoop. Made that look easy, yeah. and it wasn't. Sign of a great player. Plus Miller. Crenshaw, two on one. Crenshaw. Hey, you think these teams like to run? Edmund, the, the state's leading scoring team, coming in at 80 points per game. Edmund scored eight straight. They lead by two. Timeout work. Jerome. Foul on Cunningham. Del Garza ought to consider another timeout, huh? <laughs> well, you take one every minute, though, you run out pretty quick. That's right. We'll take another look at it down low where Bartlesville has thrived here early in the game. Slap foul. Who's that and called on Morgan? 
You know, it was called on Cunningham, but Morgan's the one that got the arm in there. But Cunningham was called with the foul. It was his man. I guess they figured he was the one that got beat. Ooh. Harris Letting got tangled up. No call. Letting him play. Noel. Nothing but net. John Noel considered a role player. His role that time is to swish it from 20. Three-pointer. eight. Yeah. Jerome Harris, his brother Gerard behind him. Stolen by JoJo Daniels. Daniels for three. Pretty good looking motion there. The guy that runs the show, a very emotional player. Sweet with the three. Billy LaFleur with the basketball. He's the point guard. Gerard Harris. Picked up by Eric Brown. Cunningham's there. No box out that time from Gerard Harris as Cunningham at great position goes in for the easy tip. Edmund is rallied and on there they are on top 13-9. It's a 13-3 run. Noel drives into the paint. Crenshaw. And it's a game foul. of runs, isn't it? This afternoon we had a game where Ardmore came out against. Tulsa McLean and had an 18-0 spurt, and that was really the difference. And here you see Bartlesville driving for the hoop as John Noel goes in, and the foul is called, but it is a possession foul, and they'll have it underneath. Gerard Harris. Two teams known for defense. Haven't seen an abundance of it early. Edmund really going to its bench early. They've got two subs in. Clifford for three. Clifford Crenshaw. Crenshaw, the best three-point shooter on the floor for Edmund. There's a reason why he's averaging 20.1 per game. He's 6'4". Crenshaw's hoping a big game tonight might land him a scholarship at a Big 8 school or a school of Division I quality. He's a good player. And the foul is on Clifford Crenshaw. Clifford picks up two quick ones. Bartlesville comes in tonight. Wes Brown told me before the game he felt the key to their game was staying tough. They cannot get worn down because Edmund has a ton of players and they play the up and down style. 16-11, Edmund, 3.50 to go in the first. Welcome back to the Navy Center that is all fired up right now with Edmund fans. And Nick, these are two teams that have great followings around the state with Bartlesville generally bringing three to 6,000 fans to big contests. And Mike De La Garza told me he's expecting three or 4,000 people up from Edmund. The crowd's getting bigger all the time. A little bit of late arriving crowd. It's probably up 7,000 or more. That's Jerome Harris being guarded by Cunningham. The center is a long way from the basket. Another foul called. And this time, Craig Frazier gets the call. Edmund started iced cold. They missed their first four shots. Since then, the Bulldogs have gone on a 7 of 8 tear to grab the 16-11 lead. Crenshaw out of the game with two fouls. Jerome Harris, one of the three, changed his mind. In trouble. May have gotten away with a walk there. Mm -hmm. LaFleur drives in, penetrates. Oh, nice move. Yeah, good move. He looked off Craig Frazier, who thought the pass was coming his way. McKinney fakes it. Frazier misses. Gerard Harris. Two on two. Forces it. And they got Harris with the foul. Gerard Harris. Depth may indeed become a key in this ball game. Game starts at a very rapid pace. Both teams fairly deep. Edmund has the advantage, though, in depth. Three minutes to play first quarter. Edmund by three. Cunningham. That's a great offensive rebound by Craig Frazier. Good look at the basket that time from Cunningham. Just had a little too much on it. But Craig Frazier was in perfect position 
grabbed the board, and Edmund keeps it under its basket. Both teams have four team fouls. They'll shoot on the seventh. Frazier for three. Jojo Daniels. And finally, the follow by Marcus Nash. Nice job by Marcus Nash in keeping that one alive. Really a leaper and a tremendous athlete at six foot three inches tall, a junior. And he'll be a blue chip football recruit next fall. Very blue. There goes LaFleur penetrating again. Nice double pump from the point guard for Bartlesville, Billy LaFleur. McKinney, he's hot from three. Can't get that one. Three on one. Gerard, Jerome. May have an ankle sprain under the, under the basket support. Or under the basket, they're near the support. Both players apparently will shake it off. You see some ankles get banged. Oh, yeah. Jerome came down funny on his right ankle. Nash is the one that appears hobbled more than anyone else as he'll take a seat. And our congratulations to Ardmore. Of course, Ardmore was the football state champion in 5A. They won the boys 4A championship, as we mentioned earlier this afternoon. And their girls won the state championship. Also today, the Norman High School girls won the 5A title. It's the year of the Tiger. Yes. Frazier misses. Edmund has already gone nine deep in the first quarter. Gerard Harris draws Holding. the foul. Got to be a hold on Craig Frazier as Harris, as the Harrises will both take the ball to the hoop aggressively. Got to play defense with your feet, not your hands. Edmund is sure launching some threes. How many threes, Don? They are cranking behind the line. Noel. Jerry Glover scoring. Edmonds already played 10 players in the first half. The turnover. Bulldogs lead 21-17, final minute of the first quarter. Morgan missing. Glover got the rebound. Here comes Bartlesville. Gerard Harris. Noel finishes. Boy, it's a great transition team there in Bartlesville. Super look down low from Billy LaFleur. Nick, I have Edmund with, unofficially, with 10 three-point attempts here in the first quarter. 30 seconds remaining. De La Garza told me a while ago that in his 25 years of coaching, unquestionably, the three-point rule is the most revolutionary thing that's happened in the game, and you can tell by the style of ball his team plays. Shot clock, game clock down to 10. <laughs> Foul called on Billy LaFleur. Six seconds remain. There you see Wes Brown, the Bartlesville coach. First year up in Bartlesville. What a quarter. Edmund rallies and they lead it 21 to 19. Stay with us. Second quarter action coming up after this.
Boss Miller. What a shot by Boss Miller. Did that clip the backboard? Again, Bartlesville takes the first shot it gets, the first good opportunity. Let's take a look at it from the baseline. Wassmiller, the three-point shooter extraordinaire. I thought it might have clipped the backboard, but no, it didn't. It was a beautiful shot all the way, and Wassmiller has given Bartlesville a one-point lead. What a clutch shot. Oh, he's shooting 39% from three-point land. Here it is from our baseline camera. He gets set, and he knocks down the biggest three-pointer of his life from 20 feet. Advantage, Bartlesville. Each team has one timeout left. These teams played a one-point game in a summer team camp up at OSU. Wes Miller has three three-pointers tonight. He's a 39% three-point shooter. Bartlesville looking for its third consecutive 5A state basketball title. Edmond has 25 seconds to change that. They trail by one. They have the ball. to get it into J.R. Cunningham. He'll have to post up strong. They're looking inside. J.R. Cunningham strong on the rebound, and he'll go to the free throw line for a couple. They were looking at him all along, but JoJo Daniels wisely took it to the hoop. Time was running down. Four seconds remain now. Cunningham was able to keep it alive, and he'll give the Edmund Bulldogs another shot. And it is called on the floor, so he'll have to make the first one to get a second one. It was not on the shot. We'll take a time. We will watch the play as JoJo Daniels had already shot. Daniels, look at his face. He's strong with the rebound. Gets the foul there. Whoa. We'll try to take another look at that because that could be critical. If it's a one and one, he misses the first. Tough news for Edmund. If it's a two-shot sh two situation, he misses the first and makes the second, you're looking at a potential overtime situation. Tough call. The official was right there on top of it, but it obviously is a big difference whether you're shooting two or shooting one in the bonus. Bartlesville leads by one point. There's four seconds to play. Let's take another look at that because it is a critical call with Cunningham now going to the line for the one and one. He goes strong. We'll see when the foul is called. It's hard to tell because, of course, there's no audio. Looks like he the was judge. going up, yeah. but it's, it's hard to say. And that's irrelevant at this point. He is the best free throw shooter, as we've mentioned several times. And he will have the opportunity to give his club a one-point lead. We've had four lead changes in the fourth quarter alone. J.R. Cunningham trying to make it a fifth lead change. He'll have to hit both. The first one is the big one. He's a junior. What a clutch free throw. We're tied. Four seconds to play. Bartlesville will look to take it the length of the court. Edmund must play solid defense with no fouls. Harris. 
De La Garza arrived at Edmond, the school had won over 50 state championships. They had never won in basketball until 1993. Stay with us, more to come from the Navy Center in Tulsa. through Langston. State Highway 33, the vehicle was sitting on the side street as he went by. And so far, there have been no arrests. Satellite has a crew in Logan County. Logan County Sheriff's Department, where the main investigation is taking place. Five Alive, Cindy Lovelace. Details now. Cindy? Well, there is an ongoing investigation right now at the Logan County Sheriff's Office. From the victim and his family, and there was an eyewitness who saw everything and gave a full account of the call. If you've seen this vehicle that I'm about to describe, you can call the Logan County Sheriff's Department. If you see a car, it's either a small car, maybe a Nissan, or it's one of Hyundai's and its Oklahoma tag. The uh, Oklahoma Department saw three people in the car, and one of them allegedly used a 380 Hyundai Tucson. Another clue to this case, uh, the eyewitness. Uh, saw the driver of the Tucson car enter the Langston campus, so they're also searching in the area looking for these suspects. Do you have any update on, on that person? We have not heard that the victim has just been released from the Bureau of Justice. He is in good condition. We do not have any information on his name at this time, but I do know that he has a seizure problem and that doctors say this man can be very safe in his home and that he would narrowly miss his Fatal damage. Reporting from the Logan County Courthouse, this is Cindy Walmore. Thank you, Cindy. We do know that it's fatal damage. A very rude emergency delivery this morning for an Oklahoma City man at the Logan County Public Health, uninvited, and crashed into a church. Brandon J. Phillips is feeling very sick. What happened here earlier? He crashed into a church. He's just sleeping in the chair. Residents have witnessed the crash and would like to see a guardrail or something in place on the roadway. An engineer for the city says that the situation will be evaluated tomorrow. As for the driver of the car, he is Dr. Frank Michel, who he was arrested on a DUI charge and will be released tomorrow morning if he chooses not to work. Now, this isn't the first time there's been a crash on the Dallas Metroplex or Parkway. During its construction, because there was an announcement on the Washington Boulevard. And city council members say they had to stand and worship, and the ramp was built. With less than 24 hours remaining until the Washington Boulevard candidates debate, all three of the candidates for the next few days will stay prepared for the event. The day began with the usual morning drive through the city council building, but tonight, the third and final debate, the council will be in session at 10 a.m. Aside from attending church, reading and rehearsing. And at lunch, the governor shook a few hands. Let the people to know very deeply about these things that I've been talking about for years. And that I believe they can make a difference. He also spoke briefly to supporters and criticized President Bush's insistence on Donald Trump and his character. So far, what he's done is the right thing. You know, talk about his own character and his Preparing for the debate at 10 a.m., the governor will check into the White House with Mrs. Bush. He'll fly to Memphis to talk to her. Here at the debate site, the work on the Capitol Hill continues. The platforms, carpeting, and camera positioning have to be put in place in less than 24 hours. The second part of this debate will be 45 minutes with a single microphone and time for the candidates to interrupt each other and ask questions with a three-person panel of journalists asking questions. On this note, the Oklahoma Governor David Lansing, Michigan. He'll be part of a big crowd of more than 30 supporters. Better known as infomercials. Presidential candidate Ross Perot spoke his mind. Dr. Perot 
Tesla's Metro headquarters. Today, and didn't watch all in the name of the today's infomercial at Perot's open. Everyone in the room, the program, and all agree this is safety. Excuse to take a break at headquarters for an hour. Why is that? Witty Blanchard says he'll be watching the program tonight on his VCR. This is disillusioned. That's how he ended up supporting Perot's cause. The campaign was not about to miss a great opportunity. In the late 60s, the 20s, we have no idea. They're coming out of the woods. Keeps them going long. Oh, I love him. I love him. Whatever it takes. Staple signs do whatever. Because he's the only man that can lead the country. That hearing, at least in this room, held November 3rd at Perot headquarters. Bob Bobble Live News tonight. Perot's headquarters say they'll intensify their efforts to attract the group. They believe this will be the At least two Oklahoma and President Bush, their candidate. But only Oklahoman praises Bush's form of government and calls him the superior candidate. Newspaper also endorsed him last week. Another poll shows voter reaction after watching the TV program suggests that Clinton leads with 46 percent. Clinton is ranked second with 31 percent of the voters supporting him. Whereas Perot is pulling a 14 percent. Based on responses from 760 across the country. And the third and final debate can be seen right here on Five Alive. Michigan State University in Lansing. Back in the evening. That's right here again. Well, topping Dateline, Bogota, Colombia, suffered strong earthquake in two days. Volcano to erupt at the same time. And sent walls crashing. Killed from the tremor, measuring 7.2 on the Richter scale. The volcano sent off an attack on villages near Thermal Baths, a popular resort in Colombia. And in Sarajevo, clearing roadblocks heading into the city to allow U.S. troop members to bring in more relief supplies. City continues, though. The latest attack caught many people off guard who were trying to find food and water. Already, two people were killed as rainstorms. Of the country, residents have experienced weather, including snow, is expected to continue. Up next on Five Alive News tonight, two multi-million dollar state questions will decide the fate of our state and our colleges. You're supposed to vote on them in Texas, so you can really know what's at stake. Also, a capital is now paying ten million dollars richer tonight, and it's all Friday. And Ross Dixon will tell us how long the city will be closed. Ross. Outside it's beautiful day. Clear skies and a crisp night. Despite all that, still in the wind fast. Now at your BK Ford dealer, you can get a test drive of the Taurus, a brand new 93 Ford Taurus GS. And that's with a big three liter. Power windows and locks. That's a dual airbag. And then a stereo cassette. And lots more, all for just two thirty-five a month. Call the Ford dealer today. This offer won't be a lot. Hammer. 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 Blake Edmund, KFC. Open tonight. Good news. Popcorn chicken. A whole new. Popcorn chicken. America's blessed with the medical facilities in the world. The cost of health care is just more than that. I want to change that. Affordable, quality health care. 
policies regardless of health conditions, security eligibility, and renewability. the kind of help since the Honda America's best selling car one thing you won't have to drop out introducing of the bond, $250,000 will go toward higher education. The University of Science and Arts Center, it alone would receive $3.1 Avalon's Great Plains Bureau Chief, Rhonda Smith. We're very proud of the job there. We do need the roof and that's a good It's uh, it leaks during, uh, during the uh, rain. Had any significant in almost 25 years. We would say they capitalized and But say after so long, the weather has hit the cold. People both sides take care of maintenance and rehabilitation of the building. We're trying to deliver education to the students. Accessibility, new equipment, modernized learning. The future won't be as bright. Well, that's just what we've got. But if this time we can work on higher education and help our future. Renovations will come from part of the existing and a new voluntary tax instant lottery conducted by the Five Alive News. I'm Rhonda Chapman. Only people who play charity can buy instant lottery tickets from a charity if it passes. Dan Brown, president of the Oklahoma Tax Board, he said the union will not take an official position this year. However, Brown says the public is not being truly informed about the issue. Brown says many voters think this is a bipartisan bond. However, more than 30 agencies, including DHS, and the Departments of Health, Mental Health, and Corrections, nearly $14 million, Brown says, will go to the National Museum in Norman, and nearly $14 million to go to government affairs. Now, Brown said he's not saying this is a partisan question, just that the voters should be informed. Well, up next, Ross tells us of radio and television in the first day of the work week. And we'll have the question, and your prayers were answered during a California game. Folks, I'm Tom Park here this morning with the Tom Park Guys in Oklahoma City. We're closed right now, but we want to take this opportunity to thank a lot of folks in Oklahoma. The most successful Dodge dealership in the country right here in Oklahoma City. We can't do it without you. We really appreciate your business. And one of the big reasons we have this big crowd that's every night at the North May, our Dodge Ram Cadillac has over 150 to choose from. We have models like this one with the monochromatic stylus. We have models with the exclusive 93 Tucson. Get it here and at the right price in less than 24 hours. Or choose from a group of 20 all mileage, well maintained, and the buyer has an option to pay $262 a month at that same price. Plus, the largest collection of conversion vans in the country right here at Lynn Hickey Dodge. The toughest body price range and that positive front alignment that makes it possible to shop in the West. Come see us at Lynn Hickey Dodge. Across Oklahoma, positive energy sparks young people to take up new schools and professions. Energy the students are to live in. Energy by thousands of hours. Energy materials now widely used. Positive energy is making a difference. Positive energy. Things coming too. Six points between six forty nine and six fifty for your first month of your first month on the Dodge Ram. Six forty nine for your fifteen thousand jobs by building new high performance gas stations or with.
research centers at all colleges and universities. Voluntary tests. To play bingo or consider back school for the future. Yes, Josephine lived in poverty, but just yesterday afternoon, the 71 year old took the hand of faith as she turned out $5,000 to take a chance at one step from California's big spin. going to donate a dollar. Uh-huh. Chili, it's still kind of cold. Watch over and it gets old. A little change uh, coming up. Uh, cloud day, Cherokee. Right now we have clear skies and it's beautiful night. 55 degrees. Off the coal at this time. Very, very light. We're from the east at 8 miles. Number four, we reached a high of 67 on Thursday. The record 33 back in eight, and the record high tonight. Across the state, poor weather going on. Generally, eight miles per hour. They are now beginning to drop these little portions of growth, but the change in the weather from border to border across the state. It's generally the 50s or 60. Take a look at satellite maps. Now, as far as Oklahoma is concerned, that moved out and moved most of the southern plains. The forecast map for today is calling for western of the Pacific Northwest, eastern sections of New Mexico, towards Oklahoma, and some rain along the way. Thunder showers in southern Florida, portions of New England. To warm in the desert south with the 30s they'll bring the uh, now for Oklahoma what we anticipate tonight is cool weather in Oklahoma City we're going to have a east wind two to five miles per hour but tomorrow partly cloudy breezy here's the forecast you can remember construction liquidation sale right here at Jim Glover Dodge units that must be left for the incoming inventory for the new franchise. This is not a make-believe sale. This is the real thing. The loaded 93 Dakota Sport Cup. It's a move at only $9,000. The best small car value ever. The 93 Dodge Shadow America. Get the Dodge without airbag. And it Jim Glover Dodge. We got it marked down to only $70. Thousand dollars less than the price price, or if you want to support the franchise, we'll do that. Hey, it's still cheaper than the competition. However you want it done, it's happening. No problem. More money on your plate, no problem. Bottom line is, we want to see you here today at Jim Glover Dodge. Come see us. I don't believe him. It's a promise.
What's up, y'all? This is MTV Jams. We're right here chilling in the lobby of the Ramada Renaissance, Washington, D.C., and I'm with Onyx. And I know when y'all first hit the scene, y'all was getting all kinds of flack about, you know, uh, throw your guns up in the air. I like the song, but personally, what was your concept for this song? A concept for the song, Throw Your Guns, was to make a song to salute hip-hop, you know what I'm saying? So that's what it's all about. It's all about saluting hip-hop. Everybody saying Throw Your Guns is a violent song, you know what I'm mm. saying? Because it, it talks about guns. But I ain't never in a million years seen a gun levitate in the air and shoot somebody. I, I seen a human mind pick up a gun and pull it with, it, with his own mind and trigger and shoot it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's not the gun that did it. What you gonna do, throw the gun in jail? No, you gotta throw the person in jail. Exactly. Like you know what I'm saying? So it ain't got nothing to do with the guns, because guns been here forever and it ain't nothing with an instrument like this mic I'm talking with, you know what I'm saying? Yo, I'm gonna tell you right oh, yeah, now, man. you can't get no realer than Onyx. You look out for him because the future is real bright for these fellas. Peace. Peace out. Coming. Yeah.